What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. In this video we'll be taking a look at Arctic's F12 fan. Just to let you all know, there are timestamps in the description so you can jump to whatever interests you, but I do recommend you watch the whole review. Now, if you do end up finding this video useful, please think about subscribing to the channel. I do release PC-related videos every week. Okay, with that out of the way, I'm going to start off with a quick overview of the F12 series from Arctic. There are seven different fans in the F12 series, and that is just the F12s. That's not including the F14s because that is a whole other video. So there is the F12 that has the three pin fan connector. There's the F12 PWM, which has a four pin fan connector. There's the F12 PWM PST that has a four pin fan connector with a built-in splitter. There's the F12 PWM PST CO, which again has the four pin fan connector with a built-in splitter. Now CO stands for continuous operation. So this is meant for servers. There's the F12 Silent, which has a three pin fan connector and has a lower rated max RPM of 800. And finally, there is the F12 TC. TC stands for temperature controlled. It has a three pin fan connector and has a temperature sensor lead built in. Now the fan I tested was the Arctic F12 PWM PST. It has a rated RPM range between 230 and 1350. It is a nine fin design. It is a fluid dynamic bearing. The connector is a PWM four pin fan connector with the PST splitter built in. PST stands for pulse width modulation sharing technology. So yes, it's quite a mouthful. There is a 10 year manufacturer's warranty. There are three color options. There's white, there's black, and then there's white black. And the price ranges between 10 and 11 USD based on color, but it is possible to get a value pack of up to five black and white fans that should run you up to 30 US dollars. And that pricing is from Arctic's website. They are sold out at time of filming, but they should be getting more in. Now, before getting to the results of my testing, I wanted to clarify that all this testing is based off of a sample size of one. So this isn't necessarily the same performance you'll get, but it should be relatively close. I'm going to start off by testing the PWM range. At zero PWM, this F12 has an RPM of 220. And at 100% PWM, this F12 has a RPM of just under 1440. Moving along to the standardized testing. Now, if you have any questions on how I test the fans, please watch my fan testing method video. There should be a card along the top. I'll also link it in the description and that should answer your questions. Starting with the DBA and RPM testing. At four volts, it was at or below the noise floor of my room with a DBA reading of 32 and an RPM of 600. At six volts, it had a sound level of 32.2 and an RPM of 860. At eight volts, the DBA only went up to 32.9 with the RPM going up to 1,075. At 10 volts, it went up to 34.8 DBA and the RPM was 1,260. And finally at 12 volts, the DBA was 36.4 with an RPM of 1,430. I did take sound recordings at each of these voltages. First, the ambient room sound for reference. Now at four volts. At six volts. At eight volts. At 10 volts. And at 12 volts. Moving on to the airflow testing. I'm still showing the DBA here for a reference. At four volts with no obstructions, it had an FPM of 130. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 110. And with the covered panel, it had an FPM of only 12. Jumping up to 12 volts with no obstructions, it had an FPM of 420. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 400. 
and with the cover panel, it had an FPM of only 125. Taking a look at the CPU cooling performance at four volts, it had a temperature of 90.4. At six volts, it had a temperature of 82.4. At eight volts, it had a temperature of 79.6. At 10 volts, it had a temperature of 77.9. And at 12 volts, it had a temperature of 76.8. And that was fun. There was a nice 25 long, 25 minute long break because some people decided to go cut their grass. Moving on to the comparisons, I'll be comparing the Arctic F12 PWM PST to the Be Quiet Pure Wings 2 High Speed, which is priced in around $11, so the same as the Arctic F12 PWM PST. I'll also be comparing it to the Deep Cool RF120 which is priced in around six US dollars, and the Noctua NF S12, F, S12A FLX, which is priced nearly double at $20. And the Noctua NF S12A FLX, which is nearly twice the price at $20. Now, please note the Noctua NFS 12A FLX does not operate at four volts. So I will be showing a zero RPM in these charts at four volts for the Noctua fan. Now, taking a look at the DBA chart, as you can see, the Pure Wings 2 high speed is noticeably louder than the other fans, with the Noctua and the Deep Cool fans being quieter than the Arctic F12 at 8, 10, and 12 volts. But as we continue to the non-obstructed airflow test, the Noctua and the Deep Cool fans move less air than the F12 and the Pure Wings 2 fans do when voltage equalized. Now the Arctic F12 PWM PST does land in the middle of the chart here, but again, it is much quieter than the Pure Wings 2 high speed fan again when voltage equalized. Now when comparing these fans in the meshed panel testing, and this mesh is pretty similar to the Lian Li Lee or Fantex metal mesh fronts, things don't really change much. All the fans do drop slightly, but not in any meaningful way. The Arctic F12 is still in the middle of the chart when voltage equalized. Now in the covered panel testing, things do change quite a bit. There is a large FPM drop across all the fans. The Noctua S12A nearly drops off the chart completely. The Deep Cool RF120 does manage to maintain its FPM a little better than the other fans, but the Arctic F12 still does manage to move an okay amount of air at the higher voltages relative to these other fans. Moving on to the CPU cooling testing, and again, just to clarify, the NFS12A does not spin at four volts, and that's why it's showing 95C at four volts. But at six, eight, 10, and 12 volts, all these fans do perform well enough. And what I mean by well enough is they're not thermally throttling. Zooming into this chart so we can see the smaller differences between these fans. Now, none of these fans performed all that well, but any of these fans can be used in a pinch if your CPU fan were to die. Moving on to the 34 dBA testing. So I have all the fans noise equalized to 34 dBA or at 12 volts if the fan doesn't actually get up to 34 dBA. Now with no obstructions, the Arctic F12 PWM PST is topping the list with an FPM of 345. When I introduce the mesh panel, the Arctic F12 PWM PST still is topping the list with an FPM of 320. Now having all the fans noise equalized to 34 dBA with the covered panel, has the Arctic F12 PWM PST drop a fair bit to an FPM of 90. So what do I think of the Arctic F12 PWM PST? Well, it's a good fan at a good price with a good warranty. It would be a good choice for where airflow is not restricted, like behind a good meshed front panel or as a rear exhaust fan. Now, I wouldn't recommend the F12 as a front intake for a case with a covered front panel or as a fan for a CPU cooler. The F12 just doesn't have enough static pressure or brute force to make it work ideally in these situations. 
Now at the time of filming, Arctic does not offer an RGB option for the F12, but they do have the three different color options to suit different builds. And I just wanted to talk about the PST splitter thing for a second. Now the PST splitter thing can also be quite useful in some situations. And in my testing, the F12 PWM PST would pull upwards of only 0.13 amps, meaning it is possible to daisy chain up to seven of these fans together on one header. Now I probably wouldn't go over six fans per header based off of these numbers, but six fans is still a lot of fans. And again, this could be very useful for small form factor motherboards that don't have that many fan headers. And I just wanted to add, in my opinion, the all white F12 does look really, really nice. Wink, wink, Arctic, if you're watching, email me, I got ideas. And that's all I have for this one. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, maybe hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter, at HFG underscore YT. You can maybe check out these videos here as well. Uh, there is also the HFG Discord server. The link is in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.